This is Industry Wednesday. Every Wednesday, we analyze a different industry. Today, we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about the private prison industry. Welcome to ALUX.com, the place where future billionaires come to get informed. Hello, Aluxers, and welcome back to our channel for another interesting video brought to you by our team here at Alux.com. In this video, we're going to uncover the 15 things you didn't know about the private prison industry. Every society has kept codes of law for its people since the beginning of time and has punished or detained members of that society for breaking them. In the past few decades, however, there has been a new alarming trend, the private prison industry, and it's a billion dollar industry. Okay, how about we dive right in and get a better look at the 15 things you didn't know about the private prison industry. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. Number one, the United States has the highest number of people in private prisons. The world's largest private jail population is in the USA. Private prisons account for almost 9% of the 1.5 million people incarcerated in prisons nationwide. Australia is right behind them, with about 160 out of every 100,000 people behind bars, and their prison rate keeps going up. However, in private jails in Australia, inmates have a lower suicide rate compared to their English peers. Number 2. Private prisons are money generators, if you can leave your ethics at the door. The government pays private prisons to take care of prisoners so they can save money. If it costs $100 a day to take care of an inmate in a regular government-run prison and a private company says they can do it for $50 a day, that's a savings for the taxpayer. But at what cost? The reason private prisons are able to care for inmates so cheaply is because they cut necessary items integral to running such an institution, such as regular cleaning, highly trained guards, and therapy care, and they go for the cheapest options. Number 3. Who's making the most money off of privately owned prisons? With a reported income of $1.79 billion, the Crown would have to go to Corrections Corporation of America, or CCA, now known as Core Civic, to distance itself from the constant scrutiny of the prison industry. It's still bringing in the big bucks by running over 170 inmate and immigrant detention centers in the United States of America. Number 4. Multiple people are running private prison earnings. An executive at a successful private prison company can expect to rake in about $2 million in earnings, or $2,000 per hour. If you're a corrections officer, plan on living around $15 per hour. As an inmate, you might earn $0.14 cents to $2 an hour, and most of that would be sent home or used on things like toothpaste from the commissionary. And the most purchased item at a commissionary? Ready food. Inmates reportedly spend an average of $225 a year on it. Other things they buy include toilet paper, they only get one roll a week from the prison, and things like antifungal cream, which is not provided by the prison and can cost $4 a tube, representing quite a few days of work for just one tube of cream. Number 5. The suicide rate is higher in private prisons. Since a privatized prison system is all about cutting costs, there's very little access to healthcare and, of course, mental health care. Add that to an already volatile and poorly managed system and you get a huge jump in suicides. It is estimated that among men, their chance of committing suicide is 6% higher than the general population, and for women, a whopping 20% higher of committing suicide than their general population counterparts. The most often sought after method in prison was hanging. Number 6. The financial cost to prisoners can be high too. So, how else does the private prison industry make its money? In addition to government contracts, it charges a pretty penny for families to remain in touch with incarcerated loved ones. 
Phone companies contracted by the prison can charge as much as $25 U.S. dollars for a 10-minute phone call. Commissionary companies are also making a profit on the inmates, raking in millions of dollars per year through the sales of essentials like soap, mouthwash, and other things inmates buy. Number 7. Private prisons are only profitable to the companies that build them, not society. Getting bad guys off the street is definitely a positive thing for any society. It's letting them back out without any reoccurrence of committing a crime that's the problem. Private prisons are notorious for not providing the training in life skills and therapy needed that will prevent prisoners from repeating the mistakes that got them arrested in the first place. Number 8. Private prisons make shady contracts with the governments they are contracting for. It should come as no surprise that the more bodies a private prison has in it, the more profitable it is. After all, it's getting paid per prisoner from the government to take their overflow of prisoners. So why are the beds always full? Well, in their government contracts, private prison companies request a guaranteed quota of prisoners per year. That means that no matter what, if there are new crime prevention programs or strides in the war against drugs, the private prison companies are always guaranteed the same number of inmates from the government. Just let that sink in for a second. Number 9. Bail bond companies also make a significant profit from private prisons. $1.4 million is collected almost every year in bail bonds by private companies from defendants and their families. Remember, not everyone held in prison is guilty. In a lot of cases, they simply could not afford to pay their bail before trial. In addition, these companies regularly lobby the government to keep bonds high in order to make a profit. Number 10. The United Kingdom was the first to use the private prison system. The UK's affair with the private prison system is winding down with a vow they will no longer contract for any new private prisons. But in 1992, they became the first to start contracting out their prison services. In their contracts, the government retains the right to hold payment for poorly run or abusive prisons. As a result, the lure to invest in private prisons in the UK has gone down, and even Scotland has a plan to phase them out completely. Number 11. Judges have taken bribes from private prisons to send them inmates. One of the biggest corruption scandals in the United States was when two judges were found to have taken over $2 million in bribes from private prisons to keep feeding the private prison system, sending juveniles to lock up for petty crimes like stealing a backpack and before they were even found guilty in a court of law. Number 12. Private prisons are a billion-dollar labor industry. A typical inmate will receive around 14 cents an hour for work within the prison. These prisoners hold jobs manufacturing everything from license plates to clothing and textbooks. The companies that use prison labor will surprise you. A few of them known to use prisoners are Victoria's Secret, Starbucks, Microsoft, and Whole Foods. Not only that, but the federal government itself sells prison labor to private companies. In fact, their latest idea is call centers. The Department of Defense even sent out a brochure to sell this program to companies, calling it the best kept secret in call centers. So, the next time you're trying to get in touch with customer service, you just might be talking to an inmate. Number 13. Stock in the two largest private prison companies went up 140% when Trump was elected. Banking on his stance on immigration and his promises to be tough on crime, investors knew right away this would mean building more facilities to incarcerate or detain people, and indeed the building has begun. In 2017, the GEO Group made $187 million by building and running an ICE, or Immigration and Customs Enforcement Detention Center, and the profits are sure to keep rolling in with the new, stricter immigration laws. The biggest issue reported in these detention centers, medical neglect. ICE is reported to spend $2 billion a year housing detainees in private facilities. Number 14. 
The United States is now competing with third world countries for clients in the manufacturing industry. Because prison labor is so cheap and largely unregulated, big companies like Unicon, IBM, and Compaq are giving all their businesses to it, getting cheap labor and pumping out things like clothing, keyboards, and circuit boards. Right now, there are inmates in 17 states in the USA on strike for better wages and conditions. Though the strike is not getting a lot of press, it is reported this could be the largest prison strike in history. Number 15. Prisoners need to eat and companies don't want to pay. Another necessity that private prisons outsource in order to cut costs is food. Large companies like Aramark, who had reported revenues of $114 billion last year, has been known for serving substandard, sometimes maggoty food to private prisons. Their goal after getting a contract is to feed inmates on around $1 per day for all three meals. A standard government-run prison spends about $5 for all three. Well, Alexers, that's a wrap on the private prison industry. Now, before you go, we're curious. Would you invest in a private prison system? Let us know in the comments. And as always, for sticking with us all the way to the end, here's your bonus. Number 16. Guantanamo Bay U.S. Naval Base Prison in Cuba costs the taxpayer a whopping $800,000 per inmate per year. And now on to a federally run prison, Guantanamo Bay, also known as Gitmo. This famous U.S. naval base prison in Cuba costs the taxpayer a whopping $800,000 per inmate per year. How many prisoners are at the bay? At its peak, it housed over 600 inmates, and as of today, there are roughly 40. The federal government still reports it costs around $445 million per year to keep this very expensive prison open and operational. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxer. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. If you want more, we handpicked these videos you might enjoy, or head over to alux.com for the best in fine living content on the planet. Be a part of the largest community of luxury enthusiasts in the world and tell your story.